Hey guys, so we're here back again with another edition of Throwback Thursdays, and what I have for you today is the Kenner Mummies Alive Fighting Armon. Now before we get into the meat and taters of this review, since I no longer have the packaging for this figure, let us first take a look-see at his lone accessory, which he did not use in the show whatsoever. Yeah, I find it weird that Armon gets this, um... What is this exactly? Is this a hammer? At any rate, he gets this, but Jakal doesn't get his bow or sword or whatever he used in the show. I know he had a weapon, I just can't remember what it is off the top of my head. That said, if you do want to use this with this figure, you can hold it in his left hand like so. And it is fairly loose. But I'm sure with a little bit of heat, you can warp this hand a little bit more close so you can hold it a little bit better. Because, yeah, it just kind of falls out. But taking a closer look at Armand himself, he is the big, lovable doofus of the group and the muscle of the group. And while this figure is alright, I will say, of the mummies themselves, I think Armand is the weakest. Which is a shame, because he does have a cool design. When we get all of his uh, armor bits on, that is. But I will tell you, apart from being uh, slightly out of scale, again, we'll look at that in just a minute, his arm does not come off in this form. And in his mummy form, Armand only has one arm. Uh, the whole thing with him gearing up uh, when they do the whole with the strength of raw thing his arm appears and the fact that this isn't removable kind of sucks because well i don't want to say they did this but i'm pretty sure that kenner had made a wampa in the power of the force line at this point where the arm popped off i would think at least it is uh what 97 by the time these came out so the fact that we didn't get that here does kind of suck and the fact that he is kind of short compared to his size in the show also kind of sucks it would have been nice if he was maybe some kind of deluxe figure because uh, thinking about it he should be at least the same height as one of the bigger gargoyles figures and he's not even close that said as far as articulation on this guy goes his head will rotate he doesn't have a neck, but he didn't really have one in the first place. His shoulders will rotate all the way around. He's got a waist swivel. And then his hips kick forward and back. And that's it. Fairly loose joints on this guy, too, compared to the other two. But he does stand. And unlike the other two, he does actually have peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So that's interesting. That said, this is the final heroic warrior, not to use Masters of the Universe terminology or anything, but this is the last of the good guys we'll be looking at from this line, because it's the last one I have. Uh, as I said in my previous Mummies Alive videos, we never got Nefertina in the States. So again, if anyone has that figure and wants to hook a brother up, you know, DM me on Instagram over at Overlord Productions, but... Yeah, kind of sucks. Um, over in some foreign countries, they did get not only Nefertina, they also got Ramses. I mentioned Pippin in the last Mummies Alive video from a couple of weeks ago. There was a more uh, basic version of Scarab. There was a Fright Sight version of this guy. Um, I want to say there was a couple other figures that uh, came out we never saw over here but uh, at the end of the day it is what it is most likely this show is just more popular over there but uh, getting him geared up here he does come with this big old honking torso piece which snaps over top of him like so kind of I don't know looks funny his head doesn't pop out as much as uh, the other two but again he doesn't have a neck so if he did, he would have looked um, a little off in mummy form. 
I'll say. He also has this little gauntlet, which snaps on over here. He's got his little boots. Here. There we go. And I will say, of all of them, his boots snap on like the least secure. Again, you can heat these up and warp them so they stay in there a little better. But uh, last but certainly not least, he does come with his ram mask. And really, as far as the aesthetic goes, this guy looks awesome. It's just the figure has a little bit to be desired in my opinion anyways compared to the other two which are freaking great this guy seems a little bit lacking mostly due to the size but uh, the pose I don't think is uh, that great doesn't look like he's ready to kick tut exactly it looks like he's just kinda ready to pop a squat in the royal bathroom is setting him down here. Boop. Uh, still a decent figure, though. For the time, he still utilizes the clip-on armor bits gimmick really well. I'm not going to knock him for that. I think he looks good with both the armor on and the armor off, actually. It's just I have a couple of nitpicks with this guy. Regarding his size and his arm not being removable. Most because that would have been easy enough to do. I mean, we've gotten plenty of explodey figures at this point in the 90s. We've gotten plenty of figures with removable limbs at this point in the 90s. Heck, uh, Kenner also did the Small Soldiers. I looked at back in December. Well, Kenner slash Hasbro. That was like really during the tail end of the merger between the two companies and uh, the Frankenstein figure has a removable arm foot piece again it's Frankenstein he's a little weird on the same side Armand's arm is supposed to you know be removable it was in the show so you know they could have done it but I get why this wasn't the most popular show, and it's a wonder we got figures from this series at all. So, you know what? Can't really complain in that regard. That said, I'm hoping that when 5K Toys gets this line off the ground, we get an arm on with a removable arm, and maybe a cap piece to put over the socket or some kind of overlay, so it looks a little bit cleaner than just having a big old peg hole sitting there. Because uh, the Jacal they showed looks really good. So I'm hoping they get around to doing the rest of the team. Uh, we'll see though. Fingers crossed that happens. Fingers crossed Jacal happens at this point. I don't think he's on pre-order yet. But um, maybe my good buddy Evil Villain will uh, let us know when that'll happen. So with that being said, let's now move on and take a look at some size comparisons. First up, here's Armand next to a couple other superhero action figures from the mid-90s. We have the uh, Toy Biz Danny Catch Ghost Rider from the Ghost Rider and Hell Cycle 2 pack and the McFarlane Toys slash Todd Toys, whatever you want to call it, Spawn 1 from Spawn Series 1. And while Jakal and Rath scaled pretty well with these two, I don't think Armand looks good with these two at all. He should at least be the same height as Spawn and even though his knees are bent and he is a bit pre-posed here I don't think straightening those out would make him tall enough to be in an appropriate scale with these guys so it is what it is next up here he is alongside the only other figures I've taken a look at from the Kenner Mummies Alive on this channel anyways thus far Jakal and Wrath, and as I said before, when we looked at Armand next to Ghost Rider and Spawn, he is totally out of scale here. If anything, he might actually be in scale with three and three quarter inch figures like G.I. Joe or Power of the Force, as I mentioned earlier. But as far as being in scale with the other characters in this line, he just isn't. He should be a lot bigger than these guys, big enough to hold them in his arms, no less. So. A bit unfortunate there, but again, it is what it is. 
And last, but certainly not least, we have our two regulars, the Mythic Legions for the Mendibulus. Live with spawn, as usual, towers over everyone. So with that being said, time to wrap things up. Some final thoughts. Overall, and out of all the Kenner Mummies Alive figures I've taken a look at on this channel anyways, thus far, our Mon here is unfortunately the weakest due to his size, pose, and the fact that you can't take his arm off along with the rest of the snap-on armor bits. That said, he is the weakest more or less because of his size, because if you weren't paying attention earlier, you would have missed the fact that he winds up being shorter than the other heroes in this line, which does kind of suck considering in the show he was big enough to carry these guys in his arms. So that in and of itself is the biggest flaw with this figure on top of the fact that you cannot remove his arm when you take off the armor bits like in the show. That said, I could probably forgive that and the pose he's in because if I'm being honest, he kind of just looks like he's popping a squat, right? I would probably forgive all of that if he was at least bigger than the other characters or at the very least the same size as the other characters because while he wouldn't be as tall as he's supposed to be he is also still pre-posed so if he was at least the same height as the other two characters i think i would have been a little bit more happy with this figure maybe cut that hammer out put a little bit more plastic into the figure itself I'm not sure why this is, it probably has something to do with the fact that Kenner was being bought out by Hasbro, and this wasn't the most popular show at this current time. It wasn't Power Rangers, it wasn't Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it wasn't even Batman the Animated Series, it was just one of those cartoons that was on weekday mornings, Saturday mornings, I'm not entirely sure what time it aired, if I'm being perfectly honest, but... It's just one of those random cartoons from the 90s that some people remember, some people don't. So, with that in mind, that's most likely why this line did not get the budget it deserved. But, for what it did get, it still didn't do too bad. If you are a fan of the Mummies Alive series, this is a definite must-have. He's one of the main characters. Just don't expect him to be as big as he was in the show. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's edition of Throwback Thursdays. If you are so inclined, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know whenever I upload more reviews like this one. If you haven't already, please hit me up on Instagram at Overlord Productions. But as always, keep the comment civil. It's the world sucks enough as it is, especially when a cool character like Armon here gets the shaft in one way or another. I mean, He's just too freaking small, man. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.